You've woken up in a prison cell. How did you get here? Last you could remember you were bringing market goods across the land for trade and business. Where are your friends? The only person you find next to you is another prisoner named Agar. He lets you know that you're now held within the Shadowgate Castle, the castle of legend that scares most travelers from any roads nearby it. From here, you know you have to escape. After eating your first prison meal, you find under this bit of hay that there's a hatch leading out of your cell. Without being able to open it on your own, you leverage the bone under the plate door and make your way out. Traveling through a dark sewer and cave system, you eventually find yourself having gained access to one of the four towers of the castle Shadowgate. While you aren't able to leave the front door, you go to venture up the stairs, only to be visited by an apparition of seemingly no ill intent. This is the ghost of the good sorcerer Lachmir. He tells you vaguely that there are two paths that you can travel here from this point you found yourself in. There is the wide path, which is easy, but leads to death, and there is the narrow path, more difficult, but once you make it through, leads to life. He tells you that he will await you in the tower next to this one. Will you follow him there, or will you take the wide path instead? This game is called Shadowgate 64, The Trials of the Four Towers, and it is one of my favorite N64 games of all time. Until recently, I've never really had the chance to beat this game save for emulating it on my PC, but I decided to go about this in a better way. I bought a copy of the game to add to my growing N64 collection, and I finally completed the journey I started long ago. Shadowgate 64 is not the first game in its series. Actually, the Shadowgate series back in the day was all simply point-and-click adventure games, and this game actually functions very similarly. It is more of an adventure game as you can walk around freely and it plays from the first person, but many of the mechanics stay the same. The basic gameplay loop will have you picking up as many items as you possibly can in hopes to use them for something later down the line that will help you progress. Very point and click style. The thing about it for me though is that this game is so much more than just the sum of its gameplay components. I started this video off with a piece of the story for a reason, you know. The story and the world that they've built within this game blows me away, and it is way, way deeper than I could have ever known as a child. While the story of your adventure is interesting at every turn, you'll also find books upon books upon books throughout your journey that will give you lessons on the history of this castle. Sometimes you'll find diaries from previously living characters, or notes written from one person to another, and it really engrossed me in the world that I was placed in. Some of the items you'll be finding hold great importance to the story, and others are just a spool of rope or a pickaxe that you found lying in the caves. But all of these will help you on your journey down the narrow path as you work with the good sorcerer against the forces of evil, tarnishing the hold they have on the land and returning peace to the world as you know it. Many of the puzzles will be as easy as placing statues in the correct order to open a door, or giving flowers to ghosts of the grave that live after lives of loneliness, but others will have you routing impossible mazes, creating nostalgic distractions for the prison guard so you can swipe dungeon keys and save your old prison partner, and, and many more. This game is as simple sometimes as it is deep, and it all works towards keeping me fully involved while I'm playing through it. If you'd like to know more about the story, maybe I'll make a video on that in the coming days. You'll have to stay subscribed to see it, so be sure to click the button below this video. Or, you could play the game for yourself. Emulating is easier than ever these days, and this is a game absolutely warrants a playthrough if you like immersive storytelling and puzzle solving. I made it through the game my first time at about 6 hours played, so it really isn't something that's gonna take you a lifetime to finish. Just give it a shot. I genuinely recommend this game with my whole heart. Anyways, I'm gonna stop gushing about it now, short and sweet. There isn't much left to say that wouldn't spoil any more of the adventure that awaits you, so I'll leave you with this question in mind. Are you willing to travel the narrow path, or will you be taking the easier wide path instead? My name is Milo, and until my next video, I'm out.